Hey everybody, Hi Tech Hillbilly here. So I have this Cisco RV340 router. I got it used off eBay for a great price to replace my old Cisco load balancing router. And there are a couple of caveats with this device. Number one is when you set it to load balancing, what it does is it takes your WAN IP and it cycles through your WAN 1 and WAN 2 IPs, your public IPs. So if you have two ISPs, what it does is it cycles through each one of those IPs um, through packet switching. And if you're connected to a web server, for instance, your web host or your banking or any other system that uses HTTPS protocol and authentication methods, a lot of those web servers are configured that if your IP address changes while you're connected to them, it will drop your connection and reset it. And what I've found personally is for instance, my web hosting company, it just drops me. And I contacted them and they basically said, there's nothing we're going to do about that because it's your fault. So there's a couple of things to do. And what I've done is I've created firewall rules regarding HTTPS. And... Originally, I just set up these IPv6, or sorry, IPv4 um, rules right here regarding HTTPS traffic and how to control it. So up here, for instance, on my web host, I also set up a second rule that is particular to a specific port that this web host uses for HTTPS. So basically on the first one here, I do a deny, deny any, any source on the destination interface, for instance, WAN2, destination to anywhere. So basically um, anywhere that's going to WAN2, I deny it. And I allow it from WAN 1 to WAN 1 to any. And I do the same thing here for this port using the HTTPS protocol. And there's one more that you can do. Um, you can also apply that, this, this exact configuration to WAN 1, or sorry, WAN 2 to allow. And then deny WAN 2. So basically anything that's sourced on WAN 1 going out it allows or uh, anything sourced using the HTTPS protocol going out WAN 1 it's going to allow it to go through WAN 1 To any uh, web server, and we're going to we do that with the standard HTTPS, and I also do that on this port here. So you just basically apply that to WAN two, doing the same thing, create another one, and that's that. So basically, you you set up two rules per interface, and if you have a secondary HTTPS um, web server that you connect to that uses a different port, you do the same thing. And what happens is it assigns, if you connect, for instance, if you, if you attempt to connect to a web server on this port, it's basically going to use WAN 1 and it's going to deny WAN 2 traffic. So you won't be connecting via WAN 1 and then have WAN 2 take over after a few seconds. 
and then switch your IP address. What's going to happen is when one will continue to use that or when one will continue to be used through that session, through any session really, if you connect to HTTPS on this port or the standard port, four, four, I think that's 443, or sorry, 8080. No, 443, sorry. Um, anyway, that's that. I hope it wasn't too confusing. I hope it was pretty simple. Um, you can set this up basically if, if it sourced from WAN 2 to also stay on WAN 2 when it connects, basically. So right now I just have it set up for WAN 1. You can also do it for WAN 1 and WAN 2 um, to only use that interface whenever it connects. It's kind of like sticky sessions, but it, I think it works better. Anyway, that's that. This is how I take Billy out.